good looking dog. Big dog. He is a big dog. This week on Kentucky Afield. Oh, we're ready. Man's best friend loves to hunt, and we're taking a look at three breeds that do just that. First, we're running the hounds at night in search of raccoons. Next, we've got the beagles out. Oh, they're coming back. And they're looking forward to chasing some rabbits. Then, I believe she's on the right. We'll look to tree some squirrels with a mountain feist. You see right there with the fork? It's sitting right there. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. I got a pretty good shot right here. All right, go ahead. Kentucky Afield. Every week, Kentucky Afield brings you features on hunting and fishing across the state. That's my pup. I'm proud of him. Here he comes right there. Let's get ready. Get ready. Look at that. What a nice, nice fish. Hey, we got wow. it up right there. We did. There he is. Ooh, a nice one, too. Boy, he's healthy. What do we got? <laughs> that was awesome. Got the first help. Got one big small mouth. Very nice. Double point. They're in there. There they go. Oh, my gosh. Woo. Look at that joker. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Whoa, this is a good one. That's better than good, Chad. Hello and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Now that modern firearm season for deer is winding down, this week's show will be totally dedicated to working dogs. Up first, we're gonna grab a spotlight and go out at night in search of raccoons. We're out here tonight in Washington County with a friendly face, Dr. Mark Brockton. Hey, we've coon hunted before, and that's what we're here to do tonight, huh? Yeah, uh, we're excited to do it. Uh, really looking forward to getting the dogs out. So which, which one's this one here? This is Doc. This, this is, is the Doc. puppy. He the just puppy. turned uh, 10 months old. 10 months old. Yeah. Man, he's grown up. Looks like he's ready to rock and roll. He's excited. How many dogs you bring out with you today? If you remember our last coon hunt, this is Hannah. I had her as a puppy out there. She's five now. Oh, okay. Um, and so she's here. And then we actually have Buzz. So this is Buzz, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, he's ready. Ready. This is uh, the daddy to the pup that marks something like that. Okay. Dog. All right. He's a good looking dog. Big dog. He is a big dog. All right, I think it's good enough. You guys ready? Oh, we're ready. Man, they're so docile walking along you like <laughs> not a care in the world. And so you turn loose, so bam, now they're, they're gone. Go. <laughs> yeah. and that's what they're supposed to do. I wish my dogs off. were that easy to handle walking <laughs> out here. They're just kind of like, yeah. I'm not too sure about this tonight, Dad. And all of a sudden, bam, they're ready to go. <laughs> That's a beautiful sound. It sure is, and that's kind of one of the reasons we do it, to <laughs> listen to that. Tell me what you got going on down here. So actually, once we turned Buzz loose, he came around this bottom, the other dogs circled back around, and they actually met up and they started training together. Okay, so you think we got one, one coon? So we'll, coon? we'll see. Sometimes they'll, uh, coons will be close together and you'll have dogs split. Sometimes they'll be together. So it'll just be interested to see what we, what we got down here. Right. They might all be together, might not be. Just well, I'll follow you. Right. Okay. We'll see Let's what we go. got. And sure enough, he's, there he's he up is. there. Yep, there he is right there. And we can actually show you sometimes when it's a, the summertime or uh, when it's a real leafy tree, we can use a the thermal to really confirm if we're having a hard time with the lights. But man, that thermal will allow you to pretty quickly scan a tree and find out if there's anything. Exactly. It, it, it gives you confidence in your dogs. You know, they're right, especially when it's hard to find. Well, let's do whatever we need to do, tie some dogs off, and we'll uh, see what we need to get done. Sounds good. I've got them pretty good here. Good shot. So Doc is a young dog and he's kind of still in his training. Yeah, so Doc's 10 months old, like I said. And this is probably only the second coon he's actually shot to him. Well, nice job. Well, thank you. Hey, that was fairly quick. Got the dogs out, got, got one tree. Nice job. Go ahead. 
All right. There's Hannah. She's on a trail right now. She's trail barking. You got two treed? Yeah. So we had Hannah treed and we're making our way to her and now Buzz. And Buzz came treed over here. He's yep. back, back over this way. Correct. All so, right, so we're gonna go to him first? So we'll go to him first and then go up and over to Hannah. All right, that sounds good. H Hannah's gonna be on that tree for a while, but that's, yeah, that's, that's part of it, isn't that's it? That's part of it. She's trained to do that, so she'll be okay. Might be in the side of this river here. Oh, wow, look. This dog, Doc, is down here trying to get out on that old sycamore tree out over the out over the river here. We'll, we'll search this tree, but you know, these sycamore trees, especially on the river, they're gonna be hollow the majority of the time, and a lot of time that raccoon's gonna be on the inside. Okay. Now, even if we do see it, you know, you don't want to shoot a raccoon out because it's gonna go in the water. Yeah. The dog's gonna go after it, pull him off here and head to Hannah. I think that's probably best, yeah. Yeah. Bud. Good job, bud. Really good way to learn your property. Oh yeah. You turn dogs loose at night, you start realizing how your property lays pretty fast. Yeah, you wanna know the easiest way to get to them too. <laughs> you got one? Yeah. Sweet. I tell you what, dogs never, never cease to amaze me. To look at how thick and nasty and right. gnarly this is, <laughs> and to think that dog is hunting through here at a fast pace, and as soon as it finds that coon and trees it, I mean, it's it's locked on, it's jumping, it's trying to, it knows it can't climb that tree, but it is not giving up. No, she won't. And, uh, and like you said, she's been here for close to an hour while we went to Buzz, and she's she stayed treed, and she's got the meat. Good girl. Good girl. He's right here. He's dead. Man, that thing sounds like a ton of bricks when it's here. Yeah, that's a big raccoon. <laughs> that's a big one. Nice shot. Hey, that was a lot of fun. I can't tell much I appreciate you guys getting out here and doing it. It's obvious watching you guys work your dog, how, how much you, one, love doing this, but how much you love working your dogs. Oh, yeah. You never know what these dogs are gonna do. You never know what the raccoons are gonna do. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Hannah, Hannah treed this this uh, this last coon. Uh, Doc treed one earlier, right? Buzz. Buzz. Buzz yeah. And then Doc and got- Doc was in on them. Yeah. Got in and on it too. So yeah. honestly, for a, for a night in the middle of the week to get out and be able to do all this and get home at a decent time and still get to work your dogs as well, Perfect That's night. That's great. Absolutely perfect night. Yeah, thank you all for coming. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate you. Appreciate thank you. Next up, we're rounding up some dogs and headed to Western Kentucky in search of rabbits. We're here in Graves County getting ready to do a rabbit hunt. So I'm here with Paul. Tell me a little bit about the dogs you brought today. I got a big male tricolored. His name's Smoke. I got him as a pup. And then I got a little tricolored female. Her name is Tess. And then I got a a blue tick male in here named Trump. He's only 10 months old, but he's doing really good this year. How many days a week you usually run these dogs? If it's real hot, two times a week, but mainly two to four times a week, every week. It don't matter July or August, year round. This part of the state, a lot of times you can find both cottontails and swamp rabbits. This piece of property we're on, what do we expect to find here? Mainly swamp rabbits. Okay. You got a buddy that came with you that also brought some dogs, right? Yeah. Well, let's go get those dogs out as well. All right. So Troy, how many dogs you bring today? I brought four today. This is Echo, this is Genie, this is Festus, and this is Leon. Just a fast-footed, strong dog that's got all-day hunt, you know. Uh, I look forward to seeing how he's gonna finish. He's doing a really good job. We've put in a lot of time to get him ready for a hunt like this. I'm excited to get out here. Hopefully these dogs get to wrap it up pretty quick. All right, here we go. They're all taking off to that one dog you just opened. Oh, they just saw it. Run over there. Let's get a move on. Here he comes right to you, Brian. Shoot him. Shoot him, Cody. Good shot. 
And it looks like they may have one down. Now this is not a big swamper. This is a smaller size swamp rabbit. This right. could very easily be confused for a cottontail, but this is what we're gonna be seeing a lot of today. You Hopefully think, some huh? bigger ones. You know what, they get too much bigger. Four of them turns into a load. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, nice job, nice shot. <laughs> I believe you could have shot that in off the porch. <laughs> Almost did. <laughs> Looks like there's a bunch of scat on this log. This is a sure sign that you got swamp rabbits, isn't this it? This is a good sign that they're swamp rabbits. Sometimes you'll catch a big hill rabbit, jump on a stump or something and do this, but nine times out of a 10, this is what a swamp rabbit will do. You know, he tries to get up out of the water and use the bathroom. Another thing that you can look at, the rabbits that eat the bottom of the trees the bark off the trees. This is a good sign that this place has got a lot of swamp rabbits in it. They're working it back. They went almost 600 yards and they're working their way back. Pretty big running swamper. Here it comes, coming straight to you. There it goes. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Good job, Ken. Did you get it? About time. I'd probably start yelling the British are coming. That rabbit had a lot of heat right off the bat. You know, he was getting sight chased hard. Oh, yeah. Golly, what a rabbit. Now, there's a swamper. Well, they're finishing the track up. He killed the rabbit. We like to let them finish the track and show them it's dead before we go on to another rabbit. How far out are they, Paul? 310. 310. They're out of hearing distance, but they'd be bringing him back here in a little bit. People who either don't use electronics or they're really not paying attention to how far the dog's running on a normal cottontail. And you call them hill rabbits, right? Yeah. About 200 is kind of normal, wouldn't you say? 200 on a cottontail, yeah. If you get a hill rabbit that goes around 300, you really start thinking, you know, what's going on. About 375. Swamp rabbits, they got a lot of different advantage over a dog or a human. The cypress trees, they're hollowed out at the bottom, and they crawl up in there and you can't get them out. Rather than go into a hole, which they get might the bottom be full of, of water, tree, they'll just go into a tree. Just anything to get a dog or coyote or bobcat off of it. Oh, they're coming back. That's what I like most about it. Whenever they pick him back up and they just start hammering, that's the best part. You see it, shoot it. There it goes. There you go. That's his first swamper. That's your first one? No, first swamper. Fantastic, man. There it is. There it goes. Oh. That one dog almost caught it. Here it he comes. Here it he comes, Cody. Here it he comes. Here he comes. We're going to let him run. Y'all better be ready. Here he comes. Just got me a little cottontail rabbit. Shot over him a little bit the first time. Man, what a great race. That dog ran that rabbit a long way, didn't he? Yeah, it? probably a good three or 400 yards. Yeah, you know? for a cottontail, that was a pretty good race. But now, we've kind of come out of some real thick swampy areas over yeah. here into more fields, so. Yeah, uh, over here, we're gonna get into more of these style rabbits. Okay, hey, nice shot. Thank you, man. Hey, we got a lot of good looking area right here to hunt. I think we're getting ready to get into it. Find him, find him, find him. That rabbit knows that it's his field all the way around it. This is a little peninsula that comes out, so he's looking for a hole to get in there, and those dogs are trying to push him. There he is, coming at you. Too far away. They had this rabbit in here, and that rabbit came out, but it was out of range, but I've been carrying this gun all day. It was time to shoot. There you go, get him. Go. There he goes. Hey, there's two, there's two. So I think they just got that rabbit. Someone yelled, there's two. He's shot. 
So I think they've got that second rabbit. It looks like they just took it. So that was great, man. I tell you what, for the dogs to get in that log jam, that's probably the safest place in this county. They got down there in the very, very bottom and she bumped that rabbit out and lo and behold, jumped a second rabbit. Looks like we got shots at both of them. Man, that is some great dog work right there. Well, I'll tell you what, this was a great experience because we got to come down here today and hunt two completely different terrains that held different species of rabbits. You guys are very passionate about your dog work and today was a lot of fun watching these dogs run a lot of distance. We had a great time. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. When I was a child, I didn't get the opportunity to squirrel hunt with dogs. But as an adult, every time I hit the woods, I immediately think this is a great opportunity to introduce a child to the outdoors. What's her name again? Uh, her name's Ellie Mae. What type of dog is she? She's a mountain fast. A mountain fast. A mountain fast. They use their eyes, ears, and their nose real well. You might see them get up on their hind legs even. They'll wind and, and they, they just go, go get him, girl. She knows what she's here for. And that oh, dog yeah. immediately. Find you. a squirrel. She's, she's pretty accurate, this little dog here is, you know. Uh, I can't speak for all of them, but I, I like, the, I like the, the breed just for the fact that usually when they tree, there's meat there because, you know, they're not just smelling a track, they're smelling that whole squirrel yeah. that's up the tree. Look how she's jumping. When she starts bouncing like that, she's smelling something right there. I think she smells one right now, guys. <coughs> she's treed. <laughs> Look at her. Look at her biting on that uh, stump. <laughs> that squirrel has went straight up into there. Look how excited and, uh, she is. Oh yeah, she's, uh, she knows it's there. That's exactly where it's at. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, Ellie. <laughs> we ain't gonna get that one. It's in a hole. Come here, baby. Right through there. That's a good girl. I usually just pack her a little ways. We'll go back up here and go through this gate. And, All right. And head up, up this way here to the right. And she should have us another tree in no time. So. That's the way we're going. There you go. She's got she's on that tree, buddy, both both front feet. I see the squirrel. I just saw the squirrel too. The squirrel sitting right up in the top. There's there's two. Is there two? I tell you what, Steve, you get in range where you think you can get a shot at one, and if the, if the other one takes off and we had to shoot at it running, I'll be ready. I was taught as a kid, they ain't small, miss small. I had to pay for my own shells, buddy. <laughs> but my uncle didn't bring me from hazard, so. I'm real careful about the way I shoot. Ready? There you go. There's one. There's one more up there. Yep. You want to shoot it? He's right up in that same fork, Chad. <laughs> Told you I had guns dead on. Yeah, man. Good girl. Good girl. Nice job, yeah. Ellie, man. Good job, Ellie. Good job, buddy. You think they don't want those squirrels? I mean, I'm telling oh, you what. she loves it. Hey, we enjoy getting out here, and it's always good for the table. But you know what? That dog likes it more than we do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look how yeah, excited she, she loves is. it. Yeah, she's excited. I believe she's on the right. Stay on this side. Don't let old Ellie May tell us where we need to go, huh? That's exactly right. You see right there with the fork? It's sitting right there. It's a gray squirrel. She's looking right at it. <laughs> Here, Chad, you come get the rifle and I'll handle the dog. I got a pretty good shot right here. All right, go ahead. Crack shot. Good job, there Ellie. There she goes. Good dog, good dog. Good dog. dog. Nice shooting, Chad. Uh, thank you. I'll tell you one thing, you've got a squirrel killing combination with that little 1022 and Ellie May. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Lord. I'll tell you what, it doesn't get any better. You just turn the dogs loose, it's very social. Yep. We can sit here and talk and carry on, talk oh, yeah. about our deer season, and lo and behold, wait for her to bark, walk yeah, up there. Yeah, we talk about bear hunting, elk hunting, everything else, and then directly you hear it bark. Let's go. We've hunted everything in the state of Kentucky and got three squirrels. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> that is pretty good. Hey, Lordy, good job. Where, where did this originate, using feist dogs? Even George Washington, some of his memoirs were talking about, you know, a feist. <laughs> feist dog. That's what they used to call them. Uh, you know, it's been that far back, but a lot of your poorer people, uh, your early settlers in the mountains and stuff, you know, they, they could have one dog for everything. So it's pretty much an all around dog. So that little feist dog was easier to feed and care for. So, you know, some families that couldn't afford the bigger dogs just took the smaller dogs and 
and they, they adapted into all around uh, uh, hunting dogs, varmint dogs, you know, and, and now they're just specifically squirrel dogs. That's interesting. You know, there's always a good storyline behind something like this, and this entire breed of dogs, because they are cheaper to feed and can be trained to, to treat multiple species, mm -hmm. came out of the mountains because the people there just didn't have much. Some of your first settlers, uh, some of my people were some of the first settlers in, in southeast Kentucky, came in through Cumberland Gap and that way into Kentucky. You know, my daddy always talked about the old feist dogs when he was a little boy down there and stuff. You know, them getting snake bit and treeing possums and coons of the night and, and squirrels of the day, you know, and stuff. And uh, he loved a tree dog and I guess that, I grew up hunting with him and that's what made me love the tree dogs. And I mean, I rabbit hunt and stuff too and got them rabbit dogs and all, you know, that. Man, I've just, they just something about a tree dog, you know, going, being able to go to it. It's just so much different. It is, and you know, your dad loved it, and I'm sure that it, it a little bit brings you back to your childhood. Absolutely. I, I think she's fixing a tree. She's tree. <laughs> there we go. We have a little talk and tree a little squirrel. <laughs> it sounds like it was the beginning of a song. Yeah. To him, girl. Good girl. Oh, I see it. Going up the tree. It's up there in the top now. I can just barely see a little piece of hair there. How's that? Good girl. Good girl, Ellie. Good girl. I just shot at what I could see. Look how red that squirrel is down its back. Yeah, sure. For is. a gray. I'll tell you one thing. She was sure it was on that tree, and I was not gonna doubt that dog. No, no. There's probably one over there, too. There it sits, right there. See it right there on the top? Right there it sits. Oh, yeah, sure do. See it? That dog was on that tree. Oh, yeah. And we spooked this one out walking to mm -hmm. it, and sure enough, again, that's a, that's a fox squirrel. So we've got a gray and a fox sitting here side by side. It is a fox squirrel. Yeah, I know she had a squirrel there, and then when you seen that other, but a lot of times that'll happen like that. Get ready, coming down the tree, get ready. Here, Ellie, here, 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 Ellie, here. She's coming down, there you go. Get him, girl, good job, Ellie. Good job, Ellie. <laughs> Fantastic, I tell you what, that is awesome. When you when you sit there and we walk in and we see a squirrel and we think, oh, that's what she's barking at right there. And I said, you know, look at that dog. She bites on my coat and everything. <laughs> look at her. Oh, God, I love that enthusiasm. <laughs> Good girl. We've got oak, scaly bark hickories. We've got tight bark hickories, big nut trees, the shag barks, scaly barks, same thing. You got red oaks, white oaks. There's plenty of big timber in here, and then you got these little locusts. That's pretty much their homes in there besides the nest, you know? Well, the woodpeckers have opened it up for them and just said, yep. here, live here. Yep. All right, girl, go get him. Go find a squirrel. Go get him. There she, she is. is. She's already treated up again. She's straight out. Yep. Straight out this ridge. I see it. It's a fox squirrel and it ain't very high. Here, Chad. Bust that fox squirrel right in the head. Look right there. Right here low. Oh, yeah. Through the cedar. Good shot. Shot, Chad. There he goes. Yeah, man. <laughs> good job. I think that's number 10. Good girl. Good girl, Ellie. You know, Steve, you like to shoot these fox squirrels right at the end of the hunt so you don't have to carry them all day. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's good thinking. Look at there what Chad shot out to you, buddy. Look, Look at there what a squirrel. Nice. Yeah, man. I'll tell you what, I can watch that dog work squirrels every single day. Are you still holding that buck tag? Well, don't worry. You still have another opportunity. December the 9th through the 17th is the late muzzleloader season here in Kentucky. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. Did you know that Kentucky is home to the largest elk herd in the eastern U.S. with an elk zone twice the size of Yellowstone National Park? Look how big that animal is. I mean, this is just... Amazing. And we enjoy one of the most diverse fisheries in the country. Just ask Christine. Very nice. Woo! And by the way, Kentucky is known for being one of the top five states for trophy whitetails each year. Additionally, more than 100,000 Kentuckians have benefited from our conservation education programs like the Salado Wildlife Education Center, summer conservation camps, 
Good job. And our Learn to Hunt and Fish classes. Or did you know about the 1.6 million acres open to the public? These are just a few things that Kentucky's Department of Fish and Wildlife have helped preserve. This is one of several we have on the Kentucky River. See, she's got plenty of room in that nest for chicks. Who pays for conservation in Kentucky? Well, since the department receives no general fund state tax dollars, we rely on the sportsmen and women of the Commonwealth. He's been waiting years for that. So, <laughs> if you enjoy Kentucky's resources, help us manage them by purchasing a hunting or fishing license today. You can do so by visiting fw.ky.gov. Do you like to fish in Kentucky? Then you'll love the new Fish Boat KY app. Search for new bodies of water, fishing regulations, and fishing reports. You can even save your fishing license. The Fish Boat KY app has all of that and more, all in the palm of your hands. What are you waiting for? Download it from your app store and go plan your next fishing adventure right now.